up ready for a top 25 showdown on senior day. The Florida Gators have come to Fayetteville to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks in front of another big crowd, an electric atmosphere here on a Sunday in November with a Sunday ahead of us a week from today that will be so impactful because so much still has to happen. Kentucky with a win today, Tennessee with a win today, Arkansas needing a win to keep pace and try to keep their hopes of winning an SEC title going. But look at Florida. They've been through so much, and they are in the top four right now in the SEC. It is great to have you with us. With Wissy Whittemore, I am Eric Fried. And yes, a week from today is Selection Sunday for the NCAA tournament. But we have so much to accomplish between now and then. We do. The season may be winding down, but the races are heating up because there is still so much to be determined, not just in the SEC, but across the entire nation in this final week of play. Feels like Florida has been through like six or seven different seasons. They've battled injuries all season long. And they've had to reinvent themselves a few times. They have. Their resiliency has been on display all year as they've had to replace three players to injury, none more important than their All-American setter, Alexis Stuckey. But through it all, they have leaned heavily into their freshman, Kennedy Martin. We talked to Mary Wise about her earlier. She pointed specifically to this last month and the point scoring that they've gotten from her out of the front row of the back row along with her block. She has become a very key piece of the puzzle. It is senior day. They will honor the seniors after this match, but you know the players and what they have meant to this program, how they have turned around the fortunes here in Fayetteville. If experience is key, Arkansas has three keys right there. This is a group of seniors who has created a culture here at Arkansas where winning is the expectation, and they have done it their way. Coach Watson said this is a group of really good volleyball players who were undervalued by men but they continue to prove that the sum is greater than the parts. They've won three in a row. Florida has won three in a row. We're ready to play here at Barnhill Arena. First serve being delivered by Arkansas. They're an excellent serving team. They've got Florida on the defensive right away as Martin bumps it over. Set back, Cartwright on the swing, and the first point of this match goes to Maggie Cartwright on senior day. And you said it, Eric, they controlled the point from the start. Hannah Hogue, one of the best servers in the league on the best serving team in the league, which is Arkansas. That will be a key piece of today's match. Hogue grabs the tape. And there's the first swing for Kennedy Martin, freshman, Fort Mill, South Carolina, who continues to pile up the numbers in her freshman season for Florida. As you just talked about, she has been the constant. Well, she's the recipient of a good set, and it's all because Kanan nailed the pass. It was a three-option pass, and so you've got Kennedy Martin able to hit over Jill Gillen. That's a great matchup. Ellie McKissick with the serve for Florida. They'll try Gillen again. Florida's there with the defense, and a chance now from the left side. Arkansas is an outstanding passing defensive team. That back row defense is excellent. That one's going to be off the mark, and it's going to be a point for Arkansas. Obviously, Sophia Victoria there going for high hands on the left side, hoping to get a place at that Arkansas block. But several ballers here early to Maggie Cartwright on the right side for Arkansas, and she's swinging into Florida's right back. Keep an eye on that, forcing their setter, Kennedy Muff, who came in in the absence of Alexis Stuckey, to have to play defense. Service error for Gillen and Arkansas. So Florida will side out. They'll get Gabby Essex into the match in the middle. And coming on to serve is Trinity Adams. Adams, good from the service line for this Florida team that served very well in their sweep at Missouri on Friday night. Free ball for Florida. Evans tried to reflexively flick it over the net. She could not, and the Gators are in front. A good start there for Florida to be able to establish them a little early on a free ball opportunity. It's a team who isn't going to look to their middle for too much offensive production, but obviously establishing it early will open things up for the pins. Cartwright, nice diving attempt to try to get it by Adams, but it's a point for Arkansas. 
take me through how you think this match might unfold. Some of the keys for both teams as they get started here in set one. Well, if you noticed, both of these teams started with their setters in right back. Two smaller setters. When those setters in the front row, the opponents have to be able to side out. They have to use that matchup to their advantage. So if they allow their opponent to go for a run with the setter in the front row, that's going to be trouble. Both of these teams have that opportunity to side out over the setter, but really this one is going to happen from the service line. In the, in the first matchup between these two, Arkansas dominated the match from the service line and prevented Florida from blocking balls. Florida has to block balls today. That first match was October 29th in Gainesville. Arkansas got the sweep, their first ever win in Gainesville. Gillen and Cartwright each had 12 kills. Taylor Head had 10 kills. Arkansas hit 287 in that match. We're tight here in set one. Point for Arkansas. The last time Arkansas beat Florida here in Fayetteville was 2015. It's been a season of first and has not happened in a while for Arkansas this season. That one's going to float long and a couple of service errors. Very aggressive serving team. They're going to yeah. have their mistakes, but more often than not, they'll keep you on your heels. And it's interesting because it's not necessarily with pace on the ball, but it's with movement. And they do a great job of serving seams between passers, and they do a great job of landing it deep on the end line. Service error for Florida evens things at five. We mentioned that last match for Florida, the sweep Friday at Missouri, ending the Tigers' four-match winning streak. Florida had five aces in that first set. And they ended with eight aces Friday. They served very effective against Mizzou. Tigers were out of system often in that match. It is tough to get Arkansas out of system as that one rolls over for an Arkansas point. That's the experience of Arkansas right there. Florida getting block help from the left front. AC Patrick up to help, and that opens up that left front area. 128 wins here in Fayetteville for Jason Watson in his 19th season overall as a head coach. 23 and four this season. 13-2 in the SEC. To the middle, Pettis has it denied. Pettis will now set Gillen for the point. Gillen doing a great job swinging down that line. Something Arkansas was successful in in the first meeting between these teams was preventing Ellie McKissick from controlling the defense for Florida. So they over attacked the right side of the court. Ellie McKissick plays in left back defense and forced Kennedy Martin middle back and the right back defender to have to defend. There's an ace for Taylor Head. That is her 32nd ace of the season and Arkansas as a team has 200 aces this season. Coming into this, Taylor Head had a one-to-one ace-to-error ratio, and now she's plus one, more aces than errors on the season. She can say that, along with her setter, Hannah Hope. To have two players on the same team with those numbers is incredible. Cartwright with the pancake save. Martin dives to keep it in play, and Florida still in the point. Jackson to Hogue, to Pettis. Great job digging it out there by Adams. But into the net, Martin on the attack, and Arkansas has their largest lead of this first set. They're up by four all of a sudden. Florida got the defense they needed there, but look at this early pancake from Maggie Cartwright, who, by the way, is playing in the back row for the first time ever in her career in six rotations, making it look easy. Essex with the point much needed after the 5 nothing run for Arkansas. Couple kills for Essex in that trip across the front row is really good news for Florida, and she kills one in front of the setter and one behind, so some nice diversity in the middle of the floor. Two swings, two kills for the junior from Hoover, Alabama, who's averaging a kill a set. Emily Kanan set the serve. Gillen and serve receive. Her kill was denied. Fitzpatrick stopped at the net. Fitzpatrick on the resets, off hands, point Florida. Florida looking like Arkansas, to be honest, on that on that point, because they do they use great block coverage to give their team a second look. And then on that second look, this is an opportunity with setter front row for Arkansas. AC Fitzpatrick goes right at those hands. Pettis. Okamore tried to get it, could not control it. Side out for Arkansas, and they'll get Zoe Evans onto the floor. 
A deadly tip by Pettis, though. Yes. You know, that's what I like about the Arkansas tip game. They don't just throw it into the middle of the floor as a free ball. They place their tips so incredibly well. Jada Lawson comes on the serve. Tight at the net. Martin reaches out, diving play. As Lawson tried to get there, couldn't keep it in play, and it's a point for the Gators. Smart play for the freshman who doesn't look like a freshman anymore. She's had so many looks this season, playing like a veteran, very aware of the holes in the defense. That block help coming from the left side, and she goes at it. How about that battle at the net? There's a center in the front row showing some of that strength to get the point for Arkansas. No one gets more opportunities at the joust than a setter. And by the end of their career, no one better at a joust <laughs> than the setter, Hannah Hogue, showing off her skills. Are you telling me practice and repetition makes perfect? <laughs> yeah, because hard to believe, perfect huh? Right there, yes. That one came up on McKissick, Florida, trying to keep it in play. But again, another good serve from Arkansas, and it's a point for the Razorbacks back on top by four. And I mentioned earlier, Hogue came into this plus one in terms of aces to errors. That is unheard of. Make it plus two now. She gets another ace here against Florida. And as I said, it's not the pace on the ball. It's the placement and the movement going at seams. So Hannah Hogue on the season, 44 aces, 42 service errors. I couldn't get it out in time, though. Yeah. So, but and she's still a plus one. She's, she's plus still one. a plus exactly. one. You're still happy with that. I like, OK. <laughs> she's still a plus that one. That was your stat of the day. So I'm I want to make you. sure we shine some light on Thank it. Thank you for doing that. It's just you don't often write that down for someone to be in the positives and the ace to error ratio and to have two on the same team now with Taylor Head. Really incredible. Cartwright with the big swing on the attack for Arkansas. That's a side out rotation where Arkansas has a couple options. They can stack everyone to the left, which they do here, and it gives Maggie Cartwright that ability to run down the middle of the court rather than to hit behind. It's just one more good look for the Razorbacks. Cartwright was good against Ole Miss in the five setter, 15 kills, had three blocks. Arkansas had to work in that match, though, last time out. It was a reverse sweep over Ole Miss. Arkansas won 25-15 in the fourth, 15-8 in the fifth. They hit 389 in the fifth. So somewhere a, a switch was flipped in the middle of that match. And you know, while well, you might look at the opponent and say, oh, no big deal, I think competitively that was a really important match for Arkansas because last time they were down 0-2, it was to Georgia and they got swept. So I think learning to compete, you know, if you're going to make a deep run in the tournament, you better be able to do that. And for Florida to make a deep run in the tournament, they better be able to block balls. And Gabby Essex doing a really nice job of that in the first meeting between these too. Florida did not have a stuff block the entire first set. So they've already, they've already improved that. You pointed it out, Essex off to a great start for Florida here in set one. That one misses the mark. It's a point for the Gators punching back here in the first set. And interesting, right after a stuff block, a hitting error. So, so often a block cannot result in just one point, but two or three because you have the ability to impact the thought process of the attackers. Dillon has trouble handling that serve. It's an ace for the Gators. So Mary Wise's team, they have been a gritty, scrappy bunch all season. You went through it at the very top, the injuries that set them back time and again, most notably to their All-American center, Alexis Stuckey. It's been the narrative and the theme all season, but I think we saw on Friday, Florida playing that cohesive volleyball playing really well at the net. That defense has always been a Mary Wise staple. Yeah, there's some Florida teams who, you know, come mid-season, they've gotten about as good as they're going to get. This Florida team, as you're seeing right now, is a team who, because of all the adjustments and the youth, has the ability to continue to get better even into late November. And we talked about the point scoring of Kennedy Martin coming in many fashions. Well, one of those ways that she's scoring points for Florida is with her block. And she gets the stuff right there. Five nothing run for Florida ends on the service error from Adams. So both teams have had 5-0 runs here in set one. And we're even at 14. Next point, we'll have a media timeout as we play the best of five. Courtney Jackson. Jackson sets it on the right side. Cartwright blocked down. Victoria leading the charge at the net. Already three blocks for the Gators here in set one, and they hit the media timeout with the one-point lead. 
In 10 of the last 12 seasons, Florida's finished in the top three in the league in blocking. Is it an indicator? South with John T. Edge. He'll be traveling through Dublin, Georgia to the Minute Grill, Miller Soul Food, First African Baptist Church. You can go along for the ride Tuesday here on the SEC Network. Good back and forth so far in this first set as Florida and Arkansas meets as we start the final week of the regular season and out of the media timeout, Arkansas goes to work and ties it at 15. Taylor Head hitting negative coming out of that timeout, goes to work at writing her numbers. Really nice swing there from the left side. Taylor Head hitting negative was not going to last very no. long. No. <laughs> Muff goes long distance to Victoria on the set. Head. Picks out the spot beautifully. Well, it is senior day here, and when you played as many points as Taylor Head and Jill Gillen, you know the savvy ways to score points as well. This is what they did in the first meeting, though. They show tip, and they get that defender on the wing to collapse, and then they go deep over their head. They had so much success with that. On the overpass, the kill from Pettis in the middle. This has been an issue for Florida over the last month, passing the ball too tight to the net, allowing the team to overpass swing rather than just an easy big box pass. Keep it off the net, allow your team to run an, run an offense. So a 3-0 run for Arkansas out of the media timeout forces Florida to use their first of two timeouts here in the first set. We mentioned that Florida has won three in a row, all by way of the sweep, including against Missouri on Friday night. Gators began the week at a half game behind Mizzou in the standings. Tigers, one of the most improved teams in the country. I think a lot of people are surprised with all that Florida's gone through to see them still in the top 20, still in the top four in the SEC. And we talked to Mary Wise about that this morning, that she even said that this group has exceeded all expectations, that Gator fans, because they're used to great success, as you know, they may look at it as a rough season, but really Mary thought that this team has achieved so much with so little yeah. this year. She said, we, we may have never done more with less. I think she said it perfectly. She said she was so proud of this group. And really what amazes me, at this point in the season, most player, most teams who have lost three starters to injury are, are saying, can we still play our, ourselves into the tournament? It's not even a question for Gators. They're in the tournament. The question is, could they still possibly host the first and second round? And that is still a possibility for a group who's down three starters. It just speaks to the coaching job of Mary Wise. Mary Wise told her team before this road trip there in Missouri, now at Arkansas, before going home to host South Carolina on Wednesday. If you win four in a row here to close out the season, that means you'd have a seven game winning streak. It's not impossible to think that you wouldn't be a top 16 team. So many things have to happen in this last week as we talked right. about at the top of the telecast. So there is hope. It's not a guarantee if you run the table, but yeah. there's hope. And I think, you know, one of the one of the things that the committee will take a cl close look at is your last 10. So that becomes very important. Yeah. And Florida playing in the SEC, who has quite a few ranked teams this season, has two ranked opportunities, including this one right here, ahead of them. Cartwright with the serve out of the timeout. Victoria with the attack error, and the run continues for the Razorbacks. A 4 nothing run right now for Arkansas. Passing held Florida back in the first meeting between these two teams. And here in the middle of set one, it's become a bit of an issue. We'll see if they can pass themselves out of this. Good serve by Cartwright. Chance here for Arkansas to add to this run. Gillen rolls it over. That's Martin on the, on the court. Head and an error on Florida, point for Arkansas. It's going to be Gaddy Essex, number 10, called into the net there as she went up to block. You see who Cartwright goes at. We've seen a lot of teams go at Florida's defensive specialist on the court, whether it be Adams or Canaan. Right now, Adams passing in right back. Sails long. That's service error number five for the Razorbacks. 
Again, here in the first. I think it was a great example, though, of Maggie Cartwright. She didn't go right on, on uh, excuse me, Adams. She goes at the seam between the Libero, El McKissick, and Adams. That is a great place to serve. Forces them to not only have to communicate one to another, but then to communicate in or out. And it's a good call by McKissick. Soft serve to Gillen. Attack at the net. And the point goes to Arkansas. Razorbacks first to 20 here in the first set. Taylor head back to serve. She's reached double digits and kills in every match except one, and that was the sweep at Georgia. Back row attack. That one goes long, and Arkansas adds to their lead. And if you're a Razorback opponent, you just can't catch your breath. It is one good server after another stepping back to the line, and they have got this Florida serving passing line, excuse me, a little shaken. Fitzpatrick. That's off hands, and it's a point for Florida. I think Fitzpatrick is fun to watch, too. You, you talk about two players on opposite sides of the net that maximize what they got. Fitzpatrick mm -hmm. and Gillen on the other side for Arkansas. Two smaller outside hitters in this league, but two of the most dynamic. Here is Gillen. Cartwright saved it. Gillen finished it. Great example of that play you were just alluding to, the smaller but very dynamic outside hitter in Jill Gillen. The save, again, it's Maggie Cartwright playing a beautiful right back and the big push from Hannah Hogue, who is just doing an incredible job running this team. So Jill Gillen on Senior Day, and again, Senior Day ceremonies here at Arkansas are after the match. You know, we talked to Jason Watson a little bit. He threw out the word compartmentalize. You know, uh -huh. you could tell that this was a day coming. And we asked him, like, is this a bittersweet day? Because this group of seniors has brought so much success and really joy to this area because we've been coming here all season long, and the attendance has just been off the charts because this has been a fun brand of volleyball to watch with this senior class. You know, it's been a, a three, four year project. They have been building for this year, knowing what they would have in the bank. If you look back to 2021, they missed out on the NCAA tournament and they felt like they were unfairly missed out, but you're looking at the reason why they weren't in the tournament. Didn't have the wins against ranked opponents. In 2022, they schedule those opponents go out and get themselves a couple wins play solid SEC volleyball there in the tournament in 2022 for the first time under Jason Watson. And now this season, three and three against ranked opponents with an opportunity against Florida and yet to come against Kentucky. They could end the season five and three against ranked opponents and look at the turnaround that would be over the course of three seasons. It's just incredible. Last year, they won that season opener against Washington, then they beat Georgia Tech, and that was really a little bit of a push to make sure there was no doubt about getting into the NCAA tournament where they won a match. They swept Utah State for the first NCAA win since 2005, then they lost in Eugene to Oregon to close out their season. Arkansas would be the first to say that when they missed out on the tournament in 2021, they took it personally. They should have. They, they definitely I took it personally. Should've. But I tell you what, they didn't allow their complaining to outweigh their work. They just went right back to work, and they made sure that there was absolutely no chance the committee could leave them out the next year. Jada Lawson on to serve. And there's a point for Fitzpatrick out of the timeout for the Gators. And think about it, too. We talked about, well, could Florida be a team if they run the table here? Could they be under consideration for hosting the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament? Arkansas is a team that's closing in on being a tournament host here in the first and second round. Definitely. Martin. Oh, great job. That's Jackson with the up, keeping Arkansas in the play. Martin tries again. And again. And then Gillen tools the block and gets the point. It starts with the defense. The back row defense for Arkansas is phenomenal. There's a reason why opponents are hitting just 180 against Arkansas this year. That's the best in the SEC. Look at the dig by Jackson just fighting that ball off. And then Jill Gillen in what looks to be a very tough matchup against Kennedy Martin. 
uses those blockers' hands. 23-18, Muff sets it back to Martin again, and no doubt about this one for Kennedy Martin, who gets her third kill of set one. Kennedy was asked after the match at Mizzou where she feels like she's most improved over the course of the season, and she talked about her ability now to identify blocks and where they are. And obviously that time in the middle doesn't close. She has all sorts of angle to swing at, but she identifies that early. McKissick. Dylan, a little off balance. Chance here for Florida to cut into the deficit. Jackson slides in. Head on the back row attack. Victoria on the outside. Picked off by Hogue. Arkansas again staying in the point. And then a violation. Point Arkansas, set point Razorbacks. Take a look at this save out of the net by Hope. She knows exactly what she's doing there, waiting for that ball to come out of the net. Arkansas's ability to stay in the long rallies, stick with it defensively, and then capitalize on a good offensive look is just the best in the country. Gillen serving for the set. SEC leader in aces with 45 entering the match. Point for Florida, not done yet, as Martin scores for the Gators. Trinity Adams on, hoping to go on an epic service run right now. Setting the middle. Hogue to Jackson, to Taylor Head. That's McKissick. Great save by the senior. Set back, Cartwright. Point, Arkansas, set one, goes to the Razorbacks. It's offense from pin to pin for these seniors from Arkansas. A double dose of Head and Cartwright, incredible. Oh, mascot on mascot crime. That's not a good way to start it here, but it was a good way to finish it for Arkansas. 25 20. Set one. Busy Sunday in the SEC. Kentucky wins again. Impressive performance by the Wildcats. They've won 14 in a row. They beat Mizzou in four. Brooklyn Delay had 20 kills. The team hit 386. Georgia with a win over Alabama. Auburn on top of LSU in set three. The other final, the match you saw before ours, Tennessee made it seven match wins in a row. They hit 316. Janasia Moore with 16 kills in the win in College Station. So that kind of sharpens what's at stake in our match because Florida, like we talked about, if they run the table, that's going to give them hope for hosting be one of those top 16 seeds. Arkansas trying to stay in contention. If Arkansas wins today and then they beat Kentucky here on Wednesday, they'd be tied for first in the SEC with Tennessee in the mix as well heading into the final couple days of the season. Yeah, big opportunities still out in front of Arkansas. Through set one, quite a flip there for Arkansas. Remember, Taylor Head was hitting negative 333 at the media timeout. She ended up hitting 333 yeah. with five kills in that first set to face Arkansas. Yeah, I think you take a look there at the service errors. Not a big difference, honestly, both teams um, in terms of aces and errors. And the blocks, Florida much better in the first set than they were in the first meeting between these two teams. But you see the hitting efficiency for Florida, and I think that's actually just a reflection of the passing. So while, while they were able to prevent a large number of aces from Arkansas, the number that those coaches are really looking at is how many options are there off of the pass. And Arkansas did a great job of creating a lot of one option passes with their serve, which then makes that much easier to defend when everyone knows where the ball is going. Eight ties, four lead changes, but a couple of big runs for Arkansas. They had two five nothing runs in that first set. Florida had a five nothing run of their own. Side out percentage, Florida was at 56% in the first set. Arkansas was at 70% in the first set. Gillen with the swing to start set two. 
And Okamore in the middle gets the first point for Florida in the second set. Good open hand tip there by Okamore. And you'll notice again, Kennedy Muff, of course, the first one back to serve opposite her, Kennedy Martin. That's going to give her three rotations across the front row. They need to get the most out of her offensively. A setter kill right there by Hannah Ho. This is such a great use of offense by Hannah Hogue because she's on the run. It's not a perfect pass. It's not necessarily when the blocker is expecting offense. And Hannah Hogue does such a good job of that, of setting the unexpected. Hogue had 12 assists in that first set. She averages just better than 11 assists a game, five times center of the week in the SEC. Gillen with a big rip and the point for the Razorbacks. The defense from Hoke, though, the one-arm dive to the right looks so similar to some of the stick saves we saw from Jackson, their Libro, in left back in that first set. This is a group that has just played a whole lot of volleyball. Coach said our practices look a lot like a match. He said there, there's randomness in the game that you can't recreate unless you just play the game. And so they play a lot of volleyball in practice. And that drops in for a Florida point. Tying in at two here in the second set. Okamore using her height to her advantage, and that's exactly what you want to do. When you have size, you want to go up high point that ball, get it to the floor quickly. Okamore, one of the seniors, honored by Arkansas before the match. They recognize the Florida seniors, and after the match, Arkansas will have their senior day ceremony. Gillen for the point. Big rip by Jill Gillen on the left side. How many times have we said that during her fantastic career? In, That's her sixth kill. In set one, they ran Maggie Cart right down the middle here. So they've already established that set. Nadia Okamore has to be on the lookout for the middle set to Cartwright. They go, they float one past her to Jill Gillian, and they're not able to close the block there. Pancake save by Hogue. Battle at the net, won by Taylor Head for Arkansas. Mary Wise thinking about a challenge here, and we will have a challenge. Hannah Hogue with the pancake save. Tell you what, she's not just an elite setter in terms of her delivery of the ball, but she's playing all phases of the game so well right now. As I mentioned, Hope, the five-time SEC Center of the Week, tied with Kentucky's Emma Grome for that honor. Had 47 assists in that five-setter against Ole Miss the other day. Hogue has been someone who's from Arkansas, as this challenge being offered up by Florida. Probably going to come back to this pancake, right? I think that's up. Missy Whittemore is our replay review analyst as well. You know how they have that in yes. the NFL. Are you sure that's up? I, I feel pretty good? confident that one's up. She gets there. So replay officials taking a peek. Conversation happening at the scores table. It's hard to believe it. Just a season ago, Hannah Hogue was playing in a 6-2 with Gracie Ryan. She was not in a 5-1, not running the offense in all six rotations. And now here she is, a five-time SEC setter of the week this season. So she has grown into that role quite well. Wow, call is reversed. Missy Whittemore, you are incorrect. Hannah Hogue can't believe it. That's nothing new, me being incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Watson got one explanation. He wants a more detailed explanation. I would say about that, to your point, Missy, this is where I'll defend my teammate. I don't see enough there in what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's enough to reverse it. That, right. I think, is going to be what the Arkansas argument is from Hogan Watson, right. especially. Oh, what do you do? So <laughs> what, do you, what do you do when things don't go your way? You try to correct it and keep it in your hands, and you work quickly like Hogue just did the head. This is so fast out of Hannah Hogue's hands. I was thinking to myself, is Taylor Head going to be there in time? And yet, to the point of how much experience they have playing together, they read each other. They know that when the pass is on her, she's going to take off. Hogue again for the pancake. They play on. Look very similar. And 
another pancake from Hogue. We're not going to get a challenge this time. And all the shots from Taylor Head, who turns on that one. Another, Remember, oh, I'm sorry. I was just, just say another errant pass from Florida. Just back to that play. Mary Wise could have challenged it again with nothing to lose, really, because she kept her two challenges because she had a successful challenge earlier, but mm -hmm. didn't bring the green card out that time. Wasn't going to tempt fate. Pettis for Hogue for Head. That's it. And again, the tempo of this set that we're seeing from Hogue, particularly outside to head right now, and she's well off the net, setting that ball out of right back, and she is pushing it out there. She's really giving head every opportunity she can against such a huge block in Essex and Martin. There's Martin with the kill. Well, one thing you're seeing here today, Missy, and if you're a fan of things happening fast in offense and attacking, three of the top five SEC kill leaders are in this match. Kennedy Martin back to serves number one, Gillen just barely number two, and Taylor Head, who has eight kills already today, is number five. And all of and she's those, adding to her total. Yeah, all of those players with over four kills per set. That's a monster number. You're talking at least 12 kills over the course of a three-set match, typically more. The consistency for Kennedy Martin has been off the charts. Double digits in kills in each match this season. Looking for Essex on the slide. Missed her mark in Arkansas has stretched it out to a four-point lead here in set two. This is a two-rotation hitter for Florida. They only have Gabby Essex and Sophia Victoria. Look for Kennedy Martin out of the back row. Victoria. Gillen sends it up into the first row at a point for Florida. That two rotation hitter is particularly important for Florida because going back to their injuries, Anna Dixon was in their M1, which is the hitter, the middle blocker who would be in the front row in that particular rotation. And then they lost their freshman outside hitter, Kira Hudson. With her length, you would expect her to be in the O1. So going into the season, you didn't expect either of those, those players to be in a position where they had to side out with only two hitters, and yet here Florida is. There's a point for Pettis as Arkansas gets the point back. So what does that mean for Kennedy Martin? Is she being asked to do even more than Florida would have wanted her to do? Because she seems like she's handling everything yeah. Yeah. pushed her away. You couldn't have said any better. Asked to do even more. That in a rotation like that, where you'd hope to have Anna Dixon and a longer outside hitter, you now are looking to Kennedy Martin out of the back row even more than you would have. Taylor Head with the serve. And that one is a kill for Fitzpatrick, touched by Arkansas. Point for Florida. It's important there for Florida to use that rotation with Hannah Hogue in the front row. She's not a poor blocker, she's just a smaller blocker. And so that's an opportunity for them to get a quick side out there. Undersized is mm -hmm. what I would like to say, but yep. plays big yes, she in does. her defense. Yes, that one she does. sails long, and it's a service error for Florida. That's the fourth for the Gators. Jada Lawson back on to serve. It has really been a tight lineup for Jason Watson right from the very start of the season. Remember, they had those two matches, memorable matches against Wisconsin as Lawson as a service error. This is what you see is what you get for Arkansas this year, which is such a flip from Florida. You just went through the injuries they've had, and it's so hard to kind of reinvent yourself a few times. But for Jason Watson, it has been good fortune and good fate, knocking on wood right uh -huh. here, Arkansas fans. But that has been so important for them. And he's been riding with this group, and it's paid off. You're talking about a team that they play like this. That could be a team that would be in the mix for making an NCAA tournament run even. Fitzpatrick's having a good match, isn't she? She is. And I tell you, that's something that Florida has been able to rely on. It seems as though either AC Fitzpatrick or Sophia Victoria will have the hot hand. And it can it can change from match to match, but one of them tends to be able to step up. And that has a lot to do with matchups, which one of them gets a favorable matchup that they're able to take advantage of. Fitzpatrick with five kills to match Kennedy Martin for the team lead. Head dug it out, then Head gets up and just could not recover 
and get it over the net. And the Gators are within one here in the second set. Head knew exactly what she wanted there. She saw that AC Fitzpatrick was coming in from left front to help block that. And she was going for that short left front tip and just didn't clear the net. Arkansas gets the point right back. Those are there's there's rotations where you really don't want to miss your serve and for Florida with the opportunity for Kennedy Martin to score for you across the front row. Those are rotations where you want to keep your serve in and yet we all know that fine line of having to be aggressive. And also they're building a little momentum. It was a three nothing yes. run that came to an end right there. You're just trying to find a way to quiet things down here in this building. McKissick dug it out from Gillen. Fitzpatrick, another kill for A.C. Fitzpatrick. That is six on 14 swings, no attack errors for the senior. Fitzpatrick played herself into a nice little rhythm when Hannah Hogue was in the front row. She had that smaller blocker, but now she's got Cartwright up there before she subbed out, and she had created a nice offensive rhythm, and she was feeling it, went right out that big block. I remember Mary Wise, at one point, we had asked her, oh, tell us about A.C. Fitzpatrick. Good hustle play by Arkansas here. They go back this time to Martin. Hogue's got the dig. Gillen on the reset. Point Arkansas. The dig by Hogue. We said moments ago she play, she's playing well in every facet of the game. Obviously, setters set. But guess what? Setters serve and setters defend. Hogue doing it all. And I'll tell you what, her teammate Taylor Head doing it all as well. How about the hustle off of the court to keep that ball in play? Martin, a little off balance, but it's going to work out. There have been cleaner points for Florida this year, but that counts <laughs> just the same as all the pretty ones. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I said to Jason Watson earlier this season, you know, watching your team is like watching, you know, a ballet, the way that they move together. And that caused him concern. He said, oh, no, there's too <laughs> many <laughs> ugly points in volleyball. We have to be able to win the ugly points, too. I said, leave it to a coach to turn a compliment into a problem, right? <laughs> Cartwright found the mark. Arkansas up by two. Cartwright, like the other pins for this Arkansas team, does such a good job of attacking high and deep. You know, and the discipline not to swing into that Florida block. Courtney Jackson with the serve. Gillen, Hogue, head, blocked by Martin. Point Florida. the reason why Kennedy Martin is such a great point scorer because she's not just an offensive player and blocking is such a difficult skill at the collegiate level and Kennedy Market Martin is making that transition so quickly. Pettis no Florida has tied it at 13. Pettis a transfer from Mississippi State gives Arkansas a lot more offensive option out of the middle than they had a season ago. Coach Watson said, we feel like we're good enough passers, which I think most would agree, that they needed a middle who could take a lot of swings, and Pettis gives them that. Victoria. Florida building some momentum right here. Martin. Jackson saved it. Hogue picked it off the net. Head found the spot. Taylor Head into double figures again. Ten kills already for the senior. In Mary Wise's words, it's hard to find kills against Arkansas. When you've got Hogue and Jackson and Gillen defending the backcourt, good luck getting that ball to the floor. A hush comes over Barnhill Arena. Respectfully for the Cartwright serve, and now they make some noise. Another big crowd. They have loved this Arkansas team all season. And that gets us to immediate timeout with Arkansas on top. Up a set and up two points in set two. Playing great here on her own floor. And the Florida native playing great against the Gators. She is the first player in this match to double digit kills, make it 10 already. Halfway here through set two, hitting 278. And remember, it was halfway through set one that she was in the negative. So she has quickly turned things around, caught fire, and she is carrying the Razorbacks right now. Her up to the minute total, 1,445 career kills, which is sixth on the all-time list at Arkansas. 17 against Ole Miss 
in the five setter already with 10 here in set two against the Gators. Out of the media timeout, Cartwright continues to serve. And a violation is called. It's going to be a point for Arkansas. I believe she was called under the center line there. Your whole foot under the center line will be a violation. Again, this is the rotation that can spell some trouble for Florida. Set her in the front row. Only two attackers. They tried to use Kennedy Martin out of middle back. She was blocked prior to the timeout. We'll see what they do here. Up to Victoria. Gets the point for Florida. That's a big side out for Florida. And Victoria just throwing one into the block there. Hannah Hogue in the front row. So that's the matchup they're really looking for. But it took a good pass opportunity for them to, to get that look that they wanted. Fitzpatrick again delivers seven kills for AC Fitzpatrick. It's really a secondary setting situation where Trinity Adams comes in and just hangs up what would look like an out of system situation, but don't tell AC Fitzpatrick that. She <laughs> came in swinging. TMI seven kills hitting 467. Fitzpatrick again, this time no. That's her first attack error, and it's a point for the Razorbacks. I like the idea. AC facing angle and tries to swing across her body and go over Hannah Hogue down the line. And that is the other thing that can happen when you've got that smaller bl middle blocker. It can also create errors because players know they have the matchup and they're going for it. That goes for the serve, doesn't get it. Seventh service error for the Razorbacks. Eight aces and 13 errors in their last match on Wednesday. Canon serve. Gillen blocked. Florida's block gets it done. Their block was really good. Their last match, 10 in the three sets against Mizzou, comes up big here. Nadia Okamore, nice job with her right hand. So often you talk about middles dropping their left hand, but because Jill Gillen likes the seam, she has to have a really strong right hand. Five blocks now for Florida. Hogue looks for another kill. Center dump works out. Point for the Razorbacks. And Florida, Florida specifically has McKissick in right back in that rotation, I think to avoid situations like this, and she just can't quite make a play on it. Lawson serves it for Arkansas. Back row attack, a lot on at that time for Kennedy Martin for the kill. That's her seventh. It was a perfect pass by McKissick. You just don't see a lot of perfect passes against this Arkansas team, and yet this is a result of a perfect pass. This is a much, much easier side out for Florida when they can nail the pass. Off with the serve, Hope to Gillen. It's a duo that has practiced a ton. Yeah. They are always on the same page, it would seem. It, and the it, timing is perfect. It's like ballet. I'm, the, I'm the sorry, I'm on your side on I this know, one. I know, the timing <laughs> is literally like a, like a middle blocker tempo. I mean, she is leaving the floor when the ball is leaving the setter's hands. But you have to know where your setter is on the floor. I mean, they just, they communicate without speaking. Part right, McKissick comes to meet it. Fitzpatrick tried to drop that one in. Gillen away from the net this time. Hogue resets her. Set back for Martin, and she finds the opening to get the point. And I'm not sure if that was by design. It may have come off of her hand a little awkward, but Martin will certainly take it. She went a little beyond the, the short tip over the block into the center of the court where she was able to create some confusion. McKissick now serving for one of the outsides. Another subtle change in Florida's lineup. The Libra exchange used to be with the middles. Now the Libra exchange with one of the outsides because Anna Dixon was a serving middle for Florida, and they don't want either of the middles serving now. So they do the exchange with their defensive specialists and middles, and now the outsides and Ellie McKissick. 
Gillen gets the kill. She has nine on 27 swings so far. Arkansas on top. Florida will take a timeout down by one and down a set here in the second. Men's College Hoop on Friday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Marshall in Lexington at Rupp to take on 17th ranked Kentucky Wildcats. Three and one, but that one, that loss was to Kansas at the State Farm Champions Classic. You can catch Friday night's game right here on the SEC Network. Um, that could be my post-match workout right there. I mean, that's a lot of RPMs for the legs. A lot of work, not a lot of return on the work, I think. Well, very wise regrouping right now. It's only one point set right now, 20 to 19, but she called the timeout. And she'll be making adjustments, we know, and that is something that this Florida team does so well on the fly. They also had to make some adjustments, though, from the first match in that Arkansas did such a nice job in that first match of not only serving, that was one of their keys, but they really attacked Florida's right back. Maggie Cartwright singing, swinging through that seam deep into right back. Time and time again, Florida even made some subs and some adjustments, putting different players over there, searching for offense. They often showed the open hand tip and shoved it deep into right back. Here you see the back row attack into right back. And on that final swing there, notice that's Ellie McKissick in the Libero jersey in right back as they were searching for defenders. So I, I do think today they have done a little better job of de defending that right back area of the court. But not well enough yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you may not be able to against this Arkansas team that pretty much has dictated how things play out in their matches this year. 23 and 4, 13 and 2 in the SEC. Out of the timeout, Gillen to serve for Arkansas. They look for Martin. Gillen dives to save it. Sent over by the Razorbacks. The point continues. Cartwright has it blocked back. Okamore leading the charge at the net for Florida. It's going to be six blocks now for Florida to Arkansas's two. That's really what you would expect that number to look like. I mean, it's Florida's one advantage in this matchup. It could possibly be seen as one of Arkansas's, um, you know, disadvantages against the teams they play. But they do so much from the service line and so much with their backcourt defense that they're really – they, they really don't miss those blocks, but for Florida, it is a key piece. McKissick dug it out. Gators a chance to go in front. But now free ball. Cartwright gets the points. Well, they say no. They thought it was touched. Arkansas side did. Jason Watson will bring out the challenge card. From where we sat live, I thought I saw a touch. However, we all know that I have been wrong many, many times, so I'd be good to get another look at this one. You're talking about your just real time. Right? <laughs> yes, we my real time. We can slow it lives. down frame by frame and see if we can see anything on that attack. The original call was no touch, so point Florida, but wasn't touched by the Gators. That's what Arkansas is challenging, the first challenge used by Jason Watson this afternoon. Again, though, coming off of the package we just showed, this is another attack out of right front into right back from Maggie Cartwright. And she splits the defenders going deep into that corner, creates some issues in that seam. I am not seeing any yeah, finger movement. I'm not either. On that angle, we'll see if we have another look. This is. Yeah, so you're looking at the right hand of Okamore where that ball comes off, right? That would be the only area that would have been touched by that attack for Cartwright, right? Yeah, it's actually, it's Essex right now. Essex, Essex is up there, yeah, no problem. And honestly, Essex, Essex does a good job. She's about a half a step late, and so she's able to press in and take away the low hard ball. And because she's not up too high, because she's about a half step late and just dives in on that low hard ball, I think this one could be out. You don't sound so sure of yourself this yeah, time, though, Missy Whittemore. I know. You are hedging a bit here. Right. Uh, call, and the call is.
is confirmed. No touch. So an unsuccessful challenge for Arkansas. That leaves them with one through the fourth set if we get there. And if we get to a fifth set, each team is given an additional challenge. No more than two available for a team per match. That's a huge point to Florida. Every sure point beyond 20, it's that race to, race to five. Muff sends it back. Martin. Oh, Martin again. We've seen her with some powerful attacks this season, but she's had success with a couple of change-ups that have dropped in. And she is pushing that tip almost beyond the first line of tip defense into the second line, and there's players that can certainly make that play for Arkansas, but she's creating a communication situation. You've actually got three players probably in position to make a play on this, and they don't know who's going to take it. They all watch it drop. A savvy play by the freshman who burst onto the scene right from the start of the season. 18 kills in her college debut against Penn State. Had 16 kills in the win at Stanford. We were wondering, you know, there are so many great freshmen in college volleyball. Will Kennedy Martin be the national freshman of the year? So you put your thinking cap on here. And you came up with a list. I must say that there'll be quite the competition for SEC freshman of the year as well, mm -hmm. because Brooklyn Delay continues to pile up big numbers for a very, very good Kentucky team. But yes, this, she is, does. this is a list that you were working on for national freshman of the this year. This is an interesting list because Kennedy Martin in the first week of play was the national freshman of the week. The only other player on that list to have been the national freshman of the week, or excuse me, to have been the national player of the week. Yes. The player of the week, Kennedy Martin as a freshman was the national player of the week in week one. This past week, Olivia Babcock of Pitt was the National Player of the Week as a freshman. When you look at the Big Tip Conference, it's really been Chloe Chacon and Bergen Riley who have flipped back and forth with that Freshman of the Week honor. And yet Harper Murray for Nebraska has her team undefeated in Big Ten play, about to grab the Big Ten championship. And so what she you're telling me is it's a that tough team choice. I, I don't know how you choose this year. There are so many good freshmen out there. Led by Martin, who, despite all the injuries, to your point that you talked about right at the top of the show, has been so consistent and she's been so good. I think, yeah, I think what sets Martin apart is the adjustments she had to make midseason. You know, they lose their starting setter the last match of pre-conference. They have to jump into the second most difficult conference in the country in terms of RPI for conferences, and they have no time to practice. And so she's had to make huge adjustments, and her numbers just continue to stay so steady. That's, I think, why her, why her performance is incredibly impressive. Good dig by Gillen. Cartwright, a little off balance. Florida on a 3-0 run. Victoria, diving save by Hogue. They say it was up, and a point for Arkansas. This surely will be challenged by Florida, saying this one was down and it wasn't saved by Hogue. As we wait for the replays, just one final thought on National Freshman of the Year. Let's put it another way. Where would Florida be right now oh. if Kennedy Martin wasn't Kennedy Martin? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Where would they be right now? If you took her out of yeah. that Florida lineup, there's no way they'd be where they are right now. Top four in the SEC yeah. and in the top 25 That's a great spot. way to look at it. You know, how much does that player mean to their team, I think is a great way to look at it. I think this one wasn't very close. And the call will be overturned. I'm, I don't mean to cut you off. Wait, wait. No. I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to no. be a good teammate. <laughs> Missy, what do you think about this one? For as much as I thought the other one was up, I think this one is down. And just to let you know, I was wrong on the other one. So that tells you how much I know. Yeah, I, I do think I, when you look at Florida's history, they have twice before had the National Freshman of the Year in Kelly Murphy, who went on to be an Olympian, and in Jeeva Raychek. And that's pretty elite company um, that you could perhaps include Kennedy Martin in. One, one thing that I love, though, you just went through that list, and we can add some other freshmen to it as the call is going to be overturned. Successful challenge for Florida. So that was down, and Florida closed again. I mean, delays playing great for Kentucky, as we just yeah. mentioned. Harper Murray second on Nebraska and kills per set behind, ironically enough, Merritt Beeson, former Florida mm -hmm. gamer. Riley's the setter for the number one team in the country. Right. Babcock had 23 kills in that thrilling win for Pitt against Louisville. 
And Shaquoin and was big in the upset of Wisconsin the other day. Right now, Florida's closing in on a match. A to set be, win to be honest match. with you, I think you can include Tory Stafford of Pitt on that list as well. They have two tremendous freshmen. Tory Stafford has played in six rotations for Pitt all season long and is a very complete six rotation outside for them. Yeah, I think it's just great that there's so much young talent that's making such an impact. Yeah. And a timeout's going to be called here by Arkansas. Set point for the Gators. Remember, Arkansas led 20 to 19, but Florida has gone on a 5 nothing run. In about 20 seconds, I'm going to ask you what's been the biggest difference for Florida on this 5 nothing run. But first, I'm going to tell you okay. and remind you that John T. Edge will be at work Tuesday night, 7 Eastern. True South, he'll be in Dublin, Georgia. You can check it all out right here on the SEC Network and also on the app. Should I stall some more? Do you no, have I answer? think I've got my answer. Go for it, Missy. All right. Here's what I think. Arkansas, who is typically so good in transition, has allowed three short tips to fall and I think the last four points. So Florida not doing anything too flashy, but maybe doing a little of Arkansas, extending rallies, keeping balls in play, and they've forced some Arkansas mistakes. Couldn't read the sign. What is ogres live? Live in swamps. Um, it's 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 a taunt too deep for me apparently. <laughs> so Arkansas on the floor, hoping to make a comeback here, but at the moment Florida in control, five nothing run. Gators hitting 297 in this set, holding Arkansas to 186. The block's been good for Florida, six blocks so far as we play here in set two. And one of the keys that Mary Wise talked about prior to this match with us was the block setup. They weren't happy with their block setup in the first meeting against Arkansas. It seems as though that is another adjustment they have made, along with, you know, chipping away at that right back defense. Serving for the set. And Cartwright will keep it alive here for Arkansas. High, deep corners, nearly undefendable, and Cartwright is the master at it. Set point number two for Florida. Jackson with the serve. That one drops in. They say it was touched. It's a point for Florida, and the set goes to the Gators. And the teams will change ends, and that's a great response by Florida, a 6-1 run to close things out in set number two. Great swing, everyone knew exactly where that ball was going to Kennedy Martin, and yet time and time again, she finds ways to come up with the big kill. Mary Wise joins us now after the set two win. I just asked Missy, what was the difference? You go on a 6-1 run to close out the second set. In your opinion, what made the difference for Florida? I think all we're trying to do, we get that you're not going to score aces against this great passing team. But can we serve balls that takes them a little out of their offensive rhythm? That's all we're trying to do. They've won every long rally. Um, I think literally if Taylor Head could go ahead and graduate before the third set, <laughs> I, I would be one please. She is playing. Their seniors are playing so well. It's just a really fun match for our team. Mary, it's a game of adjustments. You talked about block setup coming into this one. Florida block is an indicator of their success. You've got six of them right now in the match. How do you feel about that block setup? Yeah, I think I think our players would tell you that we've left a few out there, that there are some predictable moments. When they're in system, it's they are a terrific setter. It's hard to get blocks, but can we at least direct the ball and then make digs around it? Mary, thanks. We you appreciate bet. the time. Mary Wise, the Florida head coach, as the Gators take set number two. So we're even at one. A top 20 matchup here at the barn on a Sunday afternoon. The Gators and the Razorbacks heading to set three next. Meeting between these two earlier this season, Arkansas took the win and surprisingly outblocked Florida by three. But it's been a different story here today as Florida has made the necessary adjustments. And right now it's Florida up four on Arkansas, six blocks to two. I think what's important is it's not just one player. Gabby Essex leading the way with three, but you've got two from Nadia Okamore, two block assists from Sophia Victoria, two from Kennedy Martin. So blocks all along the net. That is a great sign for the Florida Gators. 
Arkansas took set one 25-20. The Gators take set two 25-21. They hit 316 in the set, close the set on a 6-1 run. Ready for set three, Arkansas to serve with Hannah Hogue. Fitzpatrick has it pushed back by Arkansas point for the Razorback. Zoe Evans up front. It's a good opportunity there for Florida because it may have been a miss on the serve from Hannah Hogue. I don't think they really want Ellie McKiss McKissick to be the passer. She put up a really nice pass. It would have been a good side out opportunity for Florida. Yeah, that time they avoid McKissick and it pays off yeah. for a point for Arkansas. Florida starts in this rotation, and yet it can be a little difficult because they've got Kennedy Martin over in the left front. All three hitters stacked in left front. Let's see what they try to do with her here. Ho oh, coming off the third ace of the match for Arkansas. Muff sends it back to Martin. Cartwright calls for it. Ho. Oh. McKissick to Martin. Hogue to Taylor Head. Martin again, another changeup works well for Florida. Martin has to go up and over the block, and guess who the block is? Jill Gillen, not the biggest block in the league, and yet she's so disciplined. You see those block deflections time and time again. She's getting a piece of it, slowing it down, allowing that Arkansas defense to just transition behind. McKissick back to serve for Florida. Dylan denied by the Florida block. That one goes to Arkansas. That one's got trouble written all over it. It's tight and it's inside. Those are two, two indicators of success for the block. And Mary Wise is motioning to Sophia Victoria right now. We talked about the block deflection of Gillen. Martin gets the deflection that time against Gillen, but Florida not able to transition that. Floor blocks now for the Razorbacks. Anna Hope dives in to save it. Cartwright hits it too far. Point for the Gators. Cartwright's been placing them on the inline in line all day long, so great communication on Florida to let that one go. Trinity Adams will come on to serve for the Gators. Gators have won three in a row after a three-match losing streak. Those losses were to Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Point Arkansas. Kennedy Martin went ahead with 11 kills, and Taylor Head keeps pace, make it 11 for her as well. That was a hard ball for the Florida block because Taylor Head well off the net, and so the block just a little early, didn't time it quite right. Essex comes up limping just a bit, but it is a point for Florida. Seems to be okay. Yeah. And if there's a team who can't afford another injury, I would say it's the Gators. Alexis Stuckey, Kara Hudson, Anna Dixon. Dixon, the middle blocker. There's Essex in the middle for Florida. Martin with the dig. Tough set for Victoria to handle. Cartwright makes Florida pay for the mistake. Cartwright continues to challenge Florida's right back as she just swings high. That time she cuts it inside the block, typically high into the seam. But that time she's able to cut it inside the block. And a service error by Cartwright. That is number eight now for Arkansas. And with the Libero exchange between Florida's outsides, one of them has to serve. And there's been matches where we've seen AC Fitzpatrick serve, but as of late, it's been Sophia Victoria getting the nod. Taylor Head with the kill. That's number 12. Taylor Head with her range. We have seen her use every part of the court. She's got sharp angle, deep shots, roll shots, that time straight down the line. Here we go. 
serve by Head. Gillen off hands, Florida sticking with it. Fitzpatrick, good rip. I started to talk before about AC Fitzpatrick, very wise, some time ago. And it's like, well, tell us about AC a little bit. She's going, this is what she said, an undersized outside who likes to blast the ball. Yeah. That's someone you can root <laughs> for right there. Yes, it is. A player that everyone loves to cheer for. Come on. Step back for Pettis. Razor backs up by two here in set three. Jada Lawson comes on the serve. You can see the angle is completely wide open for Pettis. No blocker there. And yet with Kenny Martin's length, when you talk about how much a player means to a team, she nearly makes a play on that ball. She plays such a nice middle back with all that length. It's Patrick. Off speed, drops it in. Tricky, tricky though. Does uh -huh. such a nice job of disguising this. I mean, she comes in with that big arm swing. It's not until right there yes. that you can tell she's going to go with the tip. So really much for that whole work. blast the ball uh. thing I was talking about. <laughs> Everybody's got to have a change up. That's right. We need to have a few tools in the toolkit. <laughs> Florida celebrating that point. They love that, tying it up at seven. I tell you what, this setting choice there, one of the few that maybe Hannah Hogue would like to have back as the block is just waiting on Joe Gill. That would be a great time to reverse the flow, but no hitter in right front. She'd have to go to the back row. Seven blocks for the Gators. That's more like blasting the ball that we've come to expect. AC Fitzpatrick tees up another one. Double digits now with 10. It's a really good front row for Florida. Three attackers, a great back row line of defense. This is a rotation where they need to push for points. Mm. Dylan makes sure they side out. Point for Arkansas. And something a little different. Been setting Jill Gillen all the way out at the antenna. They go for more of a gap set here. The block looks like they're going to be in position. It looks like it's going to be easy for them. But then she cuts it inside the middle blocker, that really sharp angle. Gillen in the double figures now with 10 kills, hitting a 242. Another service error. It's been an issue for Arkansas today. Nine errors, three aces. Or the Razorbacks. Yeah, and anytime you can get Hannah Hogue or Courtney Jackson off the service line, you breathe a sigh of relief. McKissick back to serve for Florida. Goes short. Gillen winds up and delivers another kill. I mean, it looks like Florida puts the perfect serve in play. This is an ace against so many teams, and Taylor Head comes diving in with a beautiful pass, and it's just a quick side out for Arkansas and what you what looked like it would be a point for Florida. Good hard serve by Gillen, and a lot of drop on it looked like, and no, that one almost found the mark, but no, Martin missed the mark. It's a point for Arkansas. It's a really good pass by Canaan because it is a hard serve off Jill Gillen and she doesn't overpass it too tight to the net. That's what you want to do there. Just hang it up in the middle of the court. Give your setter a chance. Another good pass. A reset by Victoria. Another pancake attempt here for Arkansas. We've seen a few today. They play on. Looked like that one was pretty clean. Battle at the nets, one by Victoria for Florida. Wasn't much of a fight at the net. <laughs> Sophia Victoria does such a nice job of managing swings that feel like they're gonna be really difficult and out of system. And sometimes those are her prettiest swings. She makes the hard stuff look easy. Adams waiting to serve tight at 10. It's been a tight match. Oh, back for Cartwright. Another block for the Gators. It's a nice job by Gabby Essex of not giving up on this ball. It looked like she was beat. She had to hold in the middle before she was able to release to her left, but just does a good job of staying with it and is able to dive into that seam. Oh, 
Adams got it. Buff to Victoria. Point Gators. Up by two now in set three. Some good middle back play by a number of Florida Gators, including Trinity Adams, who are doing a great job of playing the balls off the block deflection. And Florida going heavy on the short serve. We'll see if Trinity Adams goes to it again. She again. does. Building some momentum here in set three. The harder you hit it, the harder it comes back. Timeout, Arkansas. This was hit hard and it came back even harder. The block for Florida is their eighth, and the Gators are up by three here in set number three. A reminder, coming up Friday here on the SEC Network, men's college basketball, Kentucky Wildcats ranked 17th in the most recent poll. New one to come out this week, three and one. They'll take on the thundering herd of Marshall, SEC Network right here Friday nights. Some men's college hoops. Well, the block party for Florida kicking in right now. Nine blocks so far, four blocks for Arkansas. Getting blocks not a big part of what Arkansas does, but it's a huge part of Florida's success. Yeah, and their advantage in the block game continues to grow. Plus five right now after a couple of big shutdowns there at the pin by Kendi Martin. Four nothing run, forced the Arkansas timeout. Head out of the timeout with the big swing and the point for Arkansas. Notice what Arkansas does out of the timeout. Kennedy Martin had shut down head at the pin several times. They go for the gap set, and honestly, Kennedy Martin's ready for it. You see she was right there. Head has to swing into the middle blocker and around Kennedy Martin to get that kill. Essex. Did she reach over? The call is she reached over the net, and it's a point for Arkansas. Mary Wise sprinting up to protest this call. Gabby Essex thinks it's a Florida point. I wasn't sure that the Florida player touched the ball on that last contact. This is not a reviewable situation, and this is a very tight moment in this set. I'm curious here to see if the Florida player actually makes contact with the ball. I think maybe, maybe just a little. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. Leave no doubt this time, Sophia Victoria with the kill. Great response by Florida here passing. And the passing for Florida has steadied out. We saw it dip in set two after a pretty solid set one, and it's looking really solid yet again. Head with the point for Arkansas. 14 kills now for Taylor Head. It's the matchup that obviously Hannah Hogue is going to try to exploit when she's got Head hitting over Kennedy Muff. You would think Kennedy Muff would do the same here and go to the outside with Sophia Victoria over Hannah Hogue now. Cartwright serves it to Adams. Essex on the slide. Missed the mark, and Arkansas fighting back here in the third. Cartwright ready to serve for the Razorbacks. Victoria. Jackson got there. Muff tried to send it deep. Head resets. McKissick, great save to get it up. Head again. Victoria goes long, point Arkansas. Look how shallow McKissick has to come to make a play on this. All the way up into left front, that is where Taylor Head is smashing the ball. Timeout called by Florida with Arkansas in front here in the third set. Busy Sunday in the SEC. Before we came on, there was another win for Tennessee. The Lady Vols go to College Station and they get the sweep. They've won seven in a row. They host Mississippi State Wednesday. Then they're out South Carolina on Saturday. Tennessee in the mix for the SEC title.
Kentucky certainly in the mix. When you win 14 in a row, that's what they stretched their winning streak out to today for the four-set win over Missouri. You are going to be in the conversation for another SEC title. Georgia with a win, Auburn with a good bounce back win, and Ole Miss is leading Mississippi State in set number three. So the up to the minute standings, Kentucky now 15 and one on the season, Tennessee at 14 and two, Arkansas trying to keep pace with Tennessee and try to keep that set up, that match with Kentucky. Keep it so important, so vital because yeah. Arkansas wins. Those two teams play on Wednesday, Kentucky and Arkansas. Again, there's no postseason tournament right now in the SEC, so the regular season is it. That's what's at stake, the regular season championship. There's no tournament championship, and this is the next stage for these two programs. Arkansas definitely squarely still in that battle for an SEC title. And so for Arkansas and Tennessee and Kentucky, it's all about a championship. But there's still a lot at stake for some of those other schools. Well, how about Mizzou, the yep. surprise in the standings? They were not picked to finish in the top eight. What a great turnaround there by Coach John Sullivan in her first season. And Georgia, they're an interesting team this year. They were actually picked to finish fourth ahead of Arkansas. They have not produced those sort of numbers this year, and yet they did beat Arkansas head to head. Now, there should be maybe a little asterisk next to that loss for Arkansas because that was their fifth straight road match in a row. Head gets the point out of the timeout to give Arkansas another point to add to this run. Four nothing run. This is where Florida has to be very careful not to allow the passing to snowball. They've got to settle in here, get a good first contact. They get it with McKissick. Essex comes down again. You, know, you wonder too, did she, we saw that earlier, did she come yeah. down on a foot for an opponent at mm -hmm. the net? Gabby I think that's fine. I think that's twice now that yes. maybe she's landed on. And if it happened once and you're trying to walk it off and then it happens again, that's where there's trouble. Another float serve for Florida. Fitzpatrick. Pettis. For the point. The line judge initially motions out and then switches it to in. But I got to be honest with you, Eric, I'm watching Gabby Essex over the course of that rally, and she does not look comfortable. Blocked out of play. Yeah, she's still limping. Great point, Missy. This is tough here because Essex is really trying to gut it out because we've talked about how shorthanded Florida is, and she knows that there aren't reinforcements coming right now, and she's trying to do all she can to fight out there, it would appear. Blocked back onto A.C. Fitzpatrick. It's all Arkansas right now, and a timeout being called by Florida. Huge block by Hannah Hogue as Fitzpatrick tries to turn that one down the line, and. The Florida timeout will give the training staff a moment to take a look at Gabby Essex. And they're actually, it looks like they're hand, looking at yeah. her hand. This is a thumb, Eric, that she has had taped all season long. The amount of tape on that hand has actually decreased over the course of the season. So this is an injury that's perhaps not new. You know what it's like, though. We're this late in the season. You yeah. went through it. How hard is it right now for players just late in November? You're trying just to literally piece things together with tape yeah. and stay together as best you can. How yeah. hard is it? Everyone's banged up. It's, it's tape and band-aids from here through December. Nobody wants to come off the court. And particularly when you look at your older players, your juniors and seniors, you know, their bodies have been through a lot. And so you gotta love the heart of Gabby Essex here. She's trying to do what she can. Of course, there are some players who would love to be here on the floor, but they cannot. They have season ending injuries that have put things on hold for their careers. For Anna Dixon, grad student, Last played October 8th. Excellent in the middle for Florida. Elbow and wrist problems. Kira Hudson, who got off to an amazing start for her freshman year, played first three, had 26 kills in the first three matches. 
And you could talk all day about the impact Alexis Stuckey yeah. had on the program last year and at the start of this season and how much they miss her. And sadly, we won't see Anna Dixon again. Is that what, that's the end of, her, end of her journey for Kira Hudson and Alexis Stuckey? A lot of volleyball ahead for them at Florida. I mean, for Hudson, think about those first three matches for Florida, 3-0 and start on the season, those three wins, Penn State, South Florida, Stanford. Florida much needed point out of the timeout to try to stem the tide here for Arkansas. Essex has a chance to come out now. And when we talk about adjustments for Florida over the course of the season, realize Alexis Stuckey was a much taller setter across the front row. So what was a good pass to Alexis Stuckey becomes a really difficult ball for Kennedy Moss. So those passers have had to learn to keep that ball off the net. There's the block. A.C. Fitzpatrick for Florida with her first block. Moments ago, it was A.C. Fitzpatrick who got stuffed by Hannah Hook down the line. And now A.C. Fitzpatrick returns the favor on what looked to be a huge, huge advantage to Pettis. Just one blocker up, and it's the small outside blocker. But A.C. Fitzpatrick does a great job leaning into the scene there. Gillen, athletic move. Looks like her body was moving one way. The ball was kind of behind, and she still found a way to get the point. This is where experience pays for a team like Arkansas. These players have not just played so much volleyball, they've played so much volleyball together, mm. side by side. Dylan does a great job of just resetting and getting in position to get everything into a swing, doesn't she? She does, and it feels like a missed opportunity, though, for Florida, who we've talked about needing to be steady with their passing. That was one of their most perfect passes. They're not able to convert that to a kill. 14 kills for Gillen, 15 for Head. Gillen hitting 324, by the way. Blocked back, that drops in. Arkansas points. When you're hot, you're hot. And the crowd is liking what they're seeing in Barnhill. This is a little different look for Kennedy Martin, who's gone in front of the setter over and over and over. Out of the back row, they move things up a little, and a great read by that Arkansas block as they're just all over it. Zoe Evans with the block for Arkansas. That's her third block. Arkansas now up to six blocks. Florida with 10. Lawson serves with Arkansas up by five in the third. Muff goes the long way, Fitzpatrick, and violation called on Arkansas. That is good news for Florida as those two hitter rotations really can stress Florida offensively. And with that side out, it'll send Kennedy Martin to the front row. Muff. Again with the float serve, we've seen a lot of this from Florida. We've seen the float serve. We've seen a lot of success with the off-speed attacks as well, just trying to find different ways to keep Arkansas on their heels. Yeah, they really have. And a hope. Martin, point Florida. That was a difficult rotation for Florida last time around. So this time, they literally have Kennedy Martin sprinting from left front over to the right side of the court to be available for the side out swing, and she comes through. McKissick serving with her Gators down by four. Muff back for Martin. Another off-speed attack for Florida that works. And works well for Kennedy Martin, her 13th kill. Gators creeping back into it here in the third. McKissick to head. Hogue, Gillen. Muff back to Martin. Hogue to Gillen, off hands. Point Arkansas, set point for the Razorbacks and they'll come to their feet here at the barn. Hogue is doing such a nice job of putting it in the window, meaning she's giving her hitters every opportunity. They could go angle or line because of the placement of her set. It is so consistent. 
Killen serving for the set. Moff, no one there. Arkansas wins the set. You can see how hard, Arkansas. You can see how hard Florida working to get balls to Kennedy Martin, how big of a piece important she is for this Gator team, forcing balls her way, but not able to find the kill. And 20 minutes from right now, it'll be the NCAA <laughs> selection show on ESPN as we wind down the regular season. And then after the selection show, first and second round, you see that on ESPN Plus. The fifth set will wrap you around, get you everywhere around the country and keep you on top of everything. And then the four NCAA regional sites with those four teams at each site playing for a spot to try to get into the NCAA semifinals in Tampa and we will close out the season on ABC with the NCAA championship match on December 17th. They're calling the Hogs right now. We can call up the numbers through three sets. Hitting percentage advantage for Arkansas. They've been aggressive with the serve. Florida plus four in blocks. But in that second set, good job by Arkansas keeping Florida cold. Gators are 132 hitting in that set. You know, Arkansas, number one in the league, holding opponents to a 170 hitting efficiency. So Florida has outplayed that, so forcing Arkansas beyond that number, and yet they just can't come up with enough kills to be out hitting Arkansas. You see 39 kills to Arkansas's 45 there. Yeah, that second set for Florida, they hit 316. That helped that overall mm -hmm. average, but that last set more in line with what Arkansas has done defensively to teams throughout this season. Set number four underway. Arkansas on top two sets to one. Arkansas wins the set. The match is over. Florida wins. We'll go to a fifth set and play to 15. And into the net. Point Arkansas. Florida pushing hard and low over the net, reaching for those blocks. We know how important those Florida blocks are. Florida hoping to go on a late season run here and hope that there's things that fall into place elsewhere around the country that maybe they would be able to host the opening rounds of the NCAA tournament at the O-Dome. Arkansas certainly in position as that one is tipped in a point for Florida. Arkansas is certainly in position to host here. The last time they hosted NCAA tournament matches was in 2016, so it's yeah. been a little while. Arkansas in great position, and yet they've got a really tough conclusion to this <laughs> they season. Do. I mean, they just had seven of their last eight games on the road. Now they play three matches in six days, and those three matches include today's opponent, Florida, Kentucky, and Auburn. So this is a tall order here at the end of the season for the Raider Razorbacks, and yet the flip side of that is they will certainly be tournament ready. Zoe Evans misses the mark, and Florida out to an early lead here in set four. Short serve again for Florida, and again it works. That has been an effective tool for the Gators here today. Now up 3-1. McKissick trying to keep the run going for the Gators. Off hands, and the Gators make it a 4 nothing run here in set four. Coach Watson made an adjustment there prior to the serve, and they got a better pass out of that. But there's some of that nice right back defense that Florida has been searching for that time. Canaan able to defend the cross court shot. Short serve, tough for Gillen to handle, and Taylor Head been quiet for a little while, but involved in that point. She and Jill Gillen now both with 16 kills on the day. Jackson with a good serve. Victoria floated it over. Victoria with a big rip, but that is long, and it's a point for Arkansas.
Jackson to serve again. <laughs> I think that said it all, and you didn't say very much. You just knew that wasn't Twice what Florida now. was looking yeah. for. Oh. There is Okamore with the kill. And what we're seeing is the big difference between these two teams. The, for Arkansas, it's the experience of having played so much volleyball together. And for Florida, it's the miscommunication of new pieces in the puzzle as the season continues to evolve. Because twice now, you have seen um, Kennedy Muff, their setter, pulled into right front, setting, trying to set a ball to Kennedy Martin, and she's setting it behind, and Kennedy Martin is making a move to come in front of her. Neither of those are bad choices. You could do either. They just don't know what the other person is going to do, and you don't see that happen very often for Arkansas. That one ended up in the Barnhill Rafters, so you play wow. on. Wow. Hogue for Cartwright. McKissick. Victoria, the block. Cartwright, Pettis teaming up for Arkansas. Big block for Maggie Cartwright as she just seals the line. And the Florida outsides have had really tough looks today. You know, I feel like Sophia Victoria and AC Fitzpatrick have been put in some difficult situations. Got a little delay here. Mm -hmm. We play on. Cartwright for Arkansas. Oh, you could hear that one. It was Martin with a little bit of a yell and then the concussive hit on the attack. It's a good pass by Ellie McKissick. The ball's a little inside. Kenny Martin goes with it high and deep. 14 kills now for Martin, and a service error for Florida. That is the seventh for the Gators. Taylor Head. Sent back by Muff, but out of play, and Arkansas has another point. And this is the kind of serving that separates Arkansas. It's easy to look at a stat sheet and see, oh, how many aces do they have? But that's not even what the coaches are concerned about. It's these kind of serves that create overpasses, that create one option opportunities. That's what Arkansas does over and over. Where will Ho go? She'll go to Gillen. Victoria. Ho goes back to Gillen. Off the block, point Arkansas. And as we see the battle on the left side, the connection for Florida doesn't feel like it's quite there. They're not getting the quality swing from the left side. And then the reverse of that, Jill Gillen out here with every shot available to her, and she blasts it through the seam. I think that's her favorite. Point Victoria for Florida to tie it at seven. I like the switch up there for Florida. They're having trouble connecting out at the pin. It doesn't seem like they're on the same page. So they go with a gap set inside, a different look for Sophia Victoria. Victoria serves, handled by Jackson. Pettis rolls it over. And Essex in the middle gets the point for the Gators. For Essex, it's going to be five kills now. For Nady Okamore, it's five, so the, or excuse me, four. So the middles have combined for nine, and yet most of those have come with the open hand shove over. Hogue looks for the point and will get it. Hannah Hogue with her fourth kill of the match. We're tied at eight. Arkansas picked on Florida's defense in that same manner throughout the first matchup of these two teams. It felt like Florida's wings tend to collapse into the center of the court very quickly. It leaves those deep shots open, and Hannah Hogue does a great job of throwing it to the corner.
Jada Lawson, service error number 10 for Arkansas. Arkansas using their Libra exchange with their middles as Florida used to, and yet they don't have either of their middles serve. So they make a substitution there with Lawson, and then of course Courtney Jackson serving for the other middle. Emily Kanan will serve for the Gators. Kanan had three aces against Mizzou, all in the first set, back to back late in that first set. They'll put it away for Florida. They went on to sweep the Tigers. Fitzpatrick bumps it over. Hogue sets it to Gillen. Florida was ready for it. Well, nice job by the setter for Florida. Kennedy Muff with a sneaky little play to get the point to put Florida up by two here in the fourth. Muff gets a nice roll of the net there thanks to her hard shove. She had just enough on that one to get it to fall over. Good choice by Kennedy Muff. Hoag trying to work the middle to Evans. Florida answers with Okamore on the middle attack, and that one is going to miss the mark and give the point to Arkansas. It doesn't land where she wants it to, but you see the idea of pushing it up and over the defense into the deep corner. That shot is open. Anna Hoag third in the conference in total aces entering play today. Oh, Hogue tried to reach back, and that one is going to be a point for Florida. Jason Watson went to the challenge card quickly. And from where we sit, you heard Coach Watson quickly say, no way. He did not agree with that call. There have been several pancakes today that have come into question. Can't fault the, the effort of the players. They're making, they're going for it, trying to make plays on it. They're making the official's job pretty difficult, I would say. So Arkansas was unsuccessful in an earlier challenge. If this one is not successful, that would be it until the fifth set if we get there. It looks like it's down. And oftentimes we'll see players, we'll see coaches go to their player and ask their player before they choose whether or not to use the replay card. And yet Jason Watson pretty quickly was up off the bench. That was a very quick review too. Yeah. So and only, only Jill Gill really knows the answer to this question. <laughs> I would like to ask her. I don't think she's going to provide an answer for you right now. <laughs> Arkansas is out of challenges for the rest of this fourth set. Right. Again, if we get to a fifth set, they will be given an additional challenge. But that could be key here for anything borderline. Cartwright. Off one foot. Oh, my. That's all Fitzpatrick could do with it, I think. Dylan has it rejected by Kennedy Martin at the net. AC Fitzpatrick did not have a lot of options with that ball. I, amazing that she was able to get it over between the antennas. It's a free ball opportunity basically for Arkansas and the Florida block just seals the net. First block of this set for the Gators, 11 for the match. And then Cartwright misses the mark and now the Gators building a little momentum and I think a timeout, yes, a timeout being called by Arkansas down by four here in set number four. Florida needs to have this set. They're up by four. A reminder, some holiday hoops coming up the day after Thanksgiving, Friday, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, men's basketball, Marshall at Rupp Arena to take on the Wildcats. See it right here on the SEC Network. Florida Gators in a must-win set, holding Arkansas to .080 hitting in this set. So sub-100 for Arkansas. Team that's been outstanding, third in the SEC in attack percentage. They come out looking for Gillen out of the Arkansas timeout. Dug out by head, Gillen with the reset, off the block for the point. 
And Gillen with some emotion after that swing. Realize for Arkansas <laughs> in serve receive, it is always Gillen, Head, and Jackson. Those three. Gillen's got emotion after every swing, but they're just <laughs> different Jill Gill emotion levels on a yes. one through five scale. I think that one's going to be an emotional one for Taylor Head. She's pumped up after the point. A kill for Jill Gill, and then she goes back and creates a kill from the service line. Fitzpatrick off the block, out of play, point Gators. And that's a better ball to the pin because Fitzpatrick had a clean look at the line. She wasn't trapped inside. Now we're going to get a look at that serve receive for Arkansas. I alluded to moments ago, always the same three players. And Coach Watson said none of them have to be the best serve receive player in the conference, but we want them to be the best group of serve receivers so that you don't know who to avoid. And what they've done here that's so impressive is now they're dropping Maggie Cartwright back to pass the short serve that was giving them trouble, and they're doing it just effortlessly. I feel like Maggie Cartwright over the course of this match has just evolved into dropping back into serve receive, and she's just nailing pass after pass. Head with the attack error. That's her sixth error. She's hitting a 262. Gives a point to the Gators and McKissick to serve. Head can't get it back because Florida again with the defense at the net. I mean, Florida perennially a good defensive team, and we know about the problems of the injuries, the season-ending injuries to so many key players who would be difference makers at the front, but mm -hmm. that's in the Florida DNA, whoever's yeah. on the floor. Cartwright off hands, point for Arkansas. Tell you what, Cartwright has contributed in big ways here today. You might not see it in the numbers, but the small things, the serve receive she's providing, and then some big side out play. We see her off two feet time and time again, but they're in serve receive off one foot. It just provides another look. It's hard to defend. Courtney Jackson with the serve. Victoria on the attack for Florida. Hogue sets it back for Cartwright. Victoria, another off speed from the Gators. Arkansas has got that one. McKissick, Victoria, a lot on this one, but too much. And they say it was touched, so point Florida. Remember, Arkansas without a challenge for the rest of this fourth set. Yeah, that could become very important down the stretch here. This was really nice secondary setting, though, by Ellie McKissick. She hung it right up there. You see Sophia. Yes, and there was a touch. Yep. Great call by the up official. Wow. Ellie McKissick, time and time again, making plays. Oh, wow. Florida at the net. What a block, and a timeout is called by Arkansas. What would you say earlier? It goes back harder. The harder you hit yes. it, the harder it comes back. Oh, yes. my goodness. That came right back on the bridge of the nose of Courtney Jackson. And tell you, one of the things Arkansas does so incredibly well is block coverage. They get in there and cover their hitters and allow them to swing with a lot of confidence. But when you're willing to get in there this tight, it's dangerous. And Courtney Jackson well within the 10-foot line to make the rebound play on that. Oh. And you better believe that one hurts. Oh, yeah. So they brought the towel over to her. I think it's more you want to check to make sure you don't have a play nose, but it's also to wipe the tears from your eyes because yeah. you know whether it's in volleyball, basketball, you get hit on the bridge of the nose, your eyes are going to well up yep. immediately. Nothing you can do about it. As water is flowing when you get hit right there. So the timeout called by the Razorbacks. That's their second and final timeout of this set. Remember, both teams with so much to play for in this match. An Arkansas win today in a win on Wednesday. They will be tied for first with Kentucky in the SEC. Florida, a team trying to make a run to be considered a tournament host when selections are announced one week from right now on ESPN. Sunday SEC scoreboard, Kentucky with a win again. That's 14 straight victories for the Wildcats. Georgia with a victory, Ole Miss with a victory, Tennessee with their seventh straight win, and Auburn with a bounce back after losing three straight. 
they get the sweep over LSU. I thought that was a key victory today for Auburn, who has to really be careful of a skid here late in the season to maintain their composure. And how about Kentucky, as we noticed watching earlier today, playing without Reagan Rutherford again, who they missed for part of the season. And Megan Wilson on the right side, Lamb and DeLay on the left side for the Wildcats today, and don't have any word as to why. DeLay ended up with 20 kills for the match. Team hit 386 in that win over Mizzou. Taylor Head winds up and gets the point for Arkansas. There was an overpass at the net by Arkansas that Gabby Essex was able to get a hand on, but not much more than a hand. And I feel like that can be an issue for Florida at times. A ball passed over the net that they don't convert on that feels like could be a free point. Maggie Cartwright back to serve for Arkansas. Muff sent it to Essex, but it drops into the net, and it's a point for the Razorbacks. Absolutely perfect pass. Three options for Florida. That is what you're hoping for. Cartwright again. On the attack, that one will drop in, and a point for Florida. And so after setting Essex, they float one past her. And I think everybody probably expecting that ball to Kennedy Martin. So a little against the flow there for Florida as they float one past Essex. And Sophia Victoria takes a rip in the gap. Hogue for head. Muff. Heady play by Kennedy Muff to find the open spot. And Florida is on top by six here in the fourth. I like this. Redirection with purpose. Leave no doubt. Kennedy Muff gets the ball to the floor in a hurry. That is well done. And a good serve here for the Gators. Pulling away here in the fourth set. Arkansas without a timeout, without a challenge. Florida up by seven. And in this set alone, Arkansas hitting 079 to Florida's 258. But then Florida hurts themselves with a service error. That is their eight. Taylor Head will try to settle things down at the service line here mm -hmm. for Arkansas. But is it too late here in set four? Good defense by Adams and right back. Back row attack coming from Kennedy Martin. The freshman gets the kill. That's her 15th of the match. And I mean, major fist, bump, fist uh, bumps, or excuse me, fist pumps from all Florida coaches, as that is the rotation that Florida does not want to stay in for long. Great defense, just simple play up out of the back row by Adams to keep them in that. Gillen winds up and delivers. Point, Arkansas. One of the heaviest arms in the game, and you just don't expect it from what's listed as a five foot seven frame, and that could be generous at five foot seven. 20 kills for Gillen, fifth time this season. She's reached the 20 kill mark. Her season high 24 against Ole Miss last time out. She'll add to her total here, 21, and Jill Gillen says, this set isn't over yet. Gillen heating up, taking every advantage of this competitive opportunity against Florida. We talked about the fact that Florida missing players, Jill Gillen missed a little of last season with an injury. So she's enjoying being on the court right now. Lawson serves. Florida out of sync right now. Very wise, recognizing it. She's going to call a timeout. And the momentum shifting a little bit here late in set four. Well, Gillen last year had a right knee injury. She missed four matches late in the season and went on the road to Oregon, won in the opening round of the NCAA tournament, then lost to the Ducks in round two of the tournament. But this is yeah. an Arkansas team we talked about. Probably the best thing they've got going for them is the fact that they are such a cohesive unit. They've been healthy all year. And you just, again, yes. you hope that continues. But when you see them, that ballet has, has been great. You know, we were... Um, 
thinking back in the memory bank here a little bit with Sophia Victoria paying a visit here to Fayetteville, it reminded you of yeah. a Victoria sister, her older sister who played here for Arkansas for a year and had an amazing year for Arkansas playing for Jason Watson. Yeah, the Victoria sisters are one of the ties between these two teams. You see Pilar there on the left played in 2017 for Jason are we, wait, Watson. Are we sure we got it straight? Yeah, because I know. it looks very it's similar. Very hard here. to tell, but that is Pilar on the left and Sophia of Florida on the right. In 2017, Pilar Victoria averaged nearly four and a half kills per set, led the entire nation. And there is a little sister. Sophia, five, who, five and a half. Could you excuse say? Excuse me. Yeah, five, five and, and a half. half. Oh yes. no, yeah. It's uh, not a yeah, number that gets better the, you're right. as the age goes up. And no, it was five and a half. It'll be seven and a half by yes, the time she's yes, a little older. It's hard to imagine. I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't think that number could be right. I tell you that Mary Wise will joke that she began to recruit Sophia the moment she saw the swing of her sister Pilar. It's a special arm, you know. Uh, dad was a baseball player, mom was a triple jumper, and they're like the perfect combination of that. The feet, the jump, and then the arm. They, they just have a beautiful arm swing. Victoria into double digits with 11 kills for Florida today. They can use one here for the Gators, and they get it from A.C. Fitzpatrick. She has been perhaps the most valuable Gator here today. You know Kennedy mm -hmm. Martin is going to get her points, but Fitzpatrick now up to 15 kills for the Gators. When the pass is there, that's the matchup you want to go at. You've got the setter in the front row. It's a matter of getting the pass and then a nice delivery to the outside that allowed Fitzpatrick to swing over the setter. Hogue to Gillen. Muff sets it for Martin. Kill for the Gators, set point Florida. And you see just how dangerous that swing is out of the back row for Kennedy Martin because it's so fast. But that's also why there can be errors. It is such a, a quick, low delivery out of the back row that if it's not on, that ball can go straight into the net. Set point for Florida. Hope to Gillen. Not so fast, my friend. We talked about if the pass is there, this is the matchup you want, swinging over the setter. Florida did it moments ago, and now Jill Gill as well. Question is, can they find that matchup again here, facing set point number two? Fitzpatrick doesn't give them a chance. Another big swing from AC Fitzpatrick. 16 kills from Fitzpatrick, 16 for Martin. How about we play five? here in Fayetteville. And why am I not surprised? Florida Gators needed the set and they got it. Fitzpatrick, Martin teaming up to push us to a fifth set. We'll play that fifth set when we come back to Barnhill. For set, they can hurt you in so many ways from the service line. You can't hope for perfect passes. You just have to stay steady. I think it's the big box pass. Florida did a good job of that in that last set. We've seen some great play from some of the top offensive players in the SEC so far. Remember, three of the top five in this match here today. So when you look at the impact players, it is Martin, of course, and A.C. Fitzpatrick running with her today. 32 combined kills. And Jill Gill and Taylor Head combining for 40. 22 for Gillen to lead all players in this match. Gillen and Head, just the two-headed monster. You expect it from them night in and night out. And for Florida, it's the freshman. I mean, Kennedy Martin, huge role on this team, and she just does not disappoint. She's the consistent piece. And then it's always adding one other piece to the puzzle. Sometimes it's Victoria. Sometimes it's A.C. Fitzpatrick. You know, depending on matchups and the way they're able to play themselves into a match, one of those players has to step up and help her. Right now it's A.C. Fitzpatrick with just a little bit of a nod over Sophia Victoria, but both in double-digit kills. Entertaining day for the second largest crowd ever here at Barnhill Arena, 3,749 the number here today. So that is the eighth out of the top 10 matches all time for attendance. Eight of the top 10 have happened this season for Arkansas. That'll give you an idea of how great it has been here in Fayetteville for yeah. volleyball. And that's incredibly exciting because this is what we expect to be a host site for first and second rounds. And these are the kind of crowds that are going to be on hand. It's going to be a fun tournament. Cartwright looking for the first point. Gillen takes advantage of it, puts it away for Arkansas. Remember, we played a 15 here in this fifth set. 
Arkansas does have one challenge. Mm -hmm. Remember, they were out of challenges in the fourth set, and Florida has two challenges. But yeah. it goes quick here in the fifth because we're only going to 15, and with the drama built up, the intensity built up, it is exciting. Head from the back row, floats it over. Muff sends it back for Martin. Head diving play to keep it alive. Both teams on their heels a little bit on this point, and the point goes to Arkansas. We're going to get a challenge. Very wise goes to the challenge card. Florida believes that Arkansas may contact on that attack, and it should be a Florida point. And to be honest, I have no idea. I'll have to see the replay, but I will say A.C. Fitzpatrick did the very most she could with that ball. She made a play out of it. She had to go up and high point it, contact at its highest point, and with any chance to push it off a blocker's hands. This is a difficult ball. Does that left index finger wobble back a little bit? Yeah, I think to your point, Missy, because Fitzpatrick really has to make an athletic play to do something with something so tough, yeah. it just came out of her hand on an upward trajectory. And I think that's what Florida's seeing right away. It's like, well, the reason it went up be is because it got tipped, but I don't Florida. know if there's enough there. Florida clapping. I think they already feel like they've received word that it was tipped. Yeah. And that is the call. So a successful challenge for Mary Wise and the Gators. Good play by Fitzpatrick. Yeah, incredible play by Fitzpatrick, though. So athletic. McKissick to serve. Short serves again, and Cartwright handling them. What a dig. Gillen got everything into that one. McKissick was ready for it. Those two have battled quite a bit over the last four years. That one's deflected out of play. It's a point for Arkansas. This is Arkansas at its best. Antenna to antenna. First ball to the left side, an absolute rip by Gillen, and it's only a better dig that keeps it alive. Then they reverse the flow one antenna to the other, and you see there's a there's a hole in that block because the middle blocker asked to cover so much ground. Nine kills now for Cartwright. Oh, gosh, that one came in fast and hard again on Courtney Jackson. We saw her get in the contact on the bridge of the nose on the block, and her teammates just circling around her. And Junior from Kansas being saluted by the home crowd here. This is a tough Arkansas group right here. They don't even <laughs> flinch. Look at them. Just step back into serve, receive, come at me again. Trinity Adams. Step back, Cartwright. Adams there defensively. Back for Taylor. Head in the block. Gabby Essex. Tell you what, Trinity Adams. She's played right back and middle back, being asked to do multiple things, and she's playing a good middle back to keep Florida in this rally. And Gabby Essex, who earlier struggling with a thumb, taped it up and is right back to work. And she had been limping as yeah. well, so she is Golly. nowhere near 100%, but she's digging deep. 14 blocks now for Florida. Short serve creates trouble. Can Florida take advantage? Essex does. She drops it in, and the Gators are on top 4-2 here in the fifth. It's the short serve that gets them the opportunity, and it's just the soft finesse shot from Gabby Essex. Three straight points for Florida, again with the float serve for the Gators. Cartwright with the winner. And I tell you, the, the point of that short serve into right front is to clog up the attack from the right side, maybe hopefully take Maggie Cartwright out of it. And yet she uses that sharp shot, roll shot there into right front and still finds a way to kill the ball. Taylor head at the net with the block for Arkansas. The eighth for the Razorbacks.
Taylor Head playing some good volleyball here today. Nothing really wrong with this swing from Kennedy Martin. It is just perfect block setup from Taylor Head. Look at that. Pettis there to help out as well. Then a service error from Arkansas gives a point to Florida. 5-4 Gators and freshman Kennedy Martin heads back to serve. Martin, 17 kills, 10 digs, 8 blocks, but now a service error will give the point right back to Arkansas. Both setters in the front row here. Cartwright serves. Muff sends it back. Essex, point Arkansas. Just no snap on that from Gabby Essex. The pass from Trinity Adams is gorgeous, and Florida had opportunities there. Possibly Kennedy Martin out of the back row here. Adams and serve receive. They look to Victoria. Well done by Florida on the attack to tie it at six. Obviously the pass not there for a back row attack, but the tempo that Muff creates there to Sophia Victoria in a one option situation still gives her a really good look. Victoria back to serve. Hogue for head. Looking for Fitzpatrick, it is up. Another pancake, Arkansas diving all over the court here in set five. Gillen, no. Set back for Cartwright. Difficult over the shoulder. Fitzpatrick got a lot on that one. Adams out of left back now getting digs. Gillen with the dig. Great rally here in set five. Muff, Essex on the slide. That goes long. Point for Arkansas. Mary Wise is going to the challenge card quickly. And it's not on the final swing. They want a net violation prior to the final swing on a play over perhaps Jill Gillen up at the net. They, it's not the touch. They're not asking for a challenge on that last swing. They don't challenge the touch. She is specifically, they were up off the bench during the rally. There is something, I'm thinking perhaps a net violation. Yeah, no question. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. Good point too, because Dave Booz, the assistant coach, jumped right up and said she was in the net. Yeah, it's. I think this is it. I think this is it. Yes, and I think they're right. It's Taylor Head. Sorry, I may have said Jill Gillen moments ago. It's Taylor Head, it's head left front. You see Head hitting the net there. Yeah, I think her forearm hit the net. Maybe we can get a different look at that too, because I, I, I didn't see it, but you have a sharper eye than I. <laughs> well, I've already been wrong only, what, two or three times? <laughs> Florida was convinced. They went right yeah, to the challenge they did. card. They did, and they were even up off the bench prior to the rally ending. So this gives both teams a chance to regroup, take a moment as replay officials going through it right now, taking some time with it, as you would expect here in the fifth set. Right now, it's a point for Arkansas, but if this challenge is successful, the lead will flip. Can't say it enough, we only played a 15. Challenge unsuccessful. This is where, as a coach, don't you wish you could go to the replay officials and find the exact moment in the rally and say, this is what I'm talking about right here, you know? Yeah, and that it was hard to tell because the ball may have been what caused the movement at the net. Fitzpatrick, Florida comes right back. No challenging that on the attack. AC Fitzpatrick leading the team with 18 kills. 7-7. Seven, seven. Here's Emily Kanan. Jill Gill out here at the left pin. Kennedy Muff defending on that side for Florida. 
So that's where Arkansas would want to go right now. You would think. They serve it to Gillen. She sets. And then they find Gillen, but Florida's there with the defense. Okamore and Muff at the net. Muff, back row attack. Florida says touch. They're going to go back to the card. No touch called. Mary Wise calling for a challenge right away. For the moment, it's a point for Arkansas. The question is, was there a touch at the net from the Razorbacks? It's a great setting choice here by Kennedy Muff and one of those rotations for Florida where there's just two attackers. It gives them a one blocker situation really for Kennedy Ma, or excuse me, for Kennedy Martin running right down the middle of the floor. They are running this so fast. There is just absolutely no room for error on this ball from Kennedy to Kennedy, the Kennedy connection there. All right, let's look for a possible touch here. Again, touch, no touch, so hard. Don't. Should I give my opinion now that I've been wrong? You only? Can. I think I've only been wrong four times. Do you have, do you have so the far. guts to do so? Because even we've enlarged the picture trying to see something. And when you start I, doing. At this point, I think the call on the floor becomes important because I just don't know if I see much there. And remember, the call on the floor was no touch. Of note, if Florida is unsuccessful in this challenge, they will be out of challenges for the rest of this match. Very true, yeah. I don't know. I think I'm wrong again. This is almost comical. Florida cheering, so I get the feeling the call is going to go their well, direction. Well, either, and you do either not Either way, want me. either way, we're switching sides yeah. because it's eight seven. And a I'm touch telling you right is now, called. You do not want me to rule in your favor. That you is what, trouble Missy, written all over it. You know, once you just stay right here as an analyst, <laughs> we will not be. I'm going to stay in my lane there, the rest of the match. There's no need for you to freelance I'm as a replay in official. Stay in my lane. <laughs> no more speculation from me. So, Florida successful on the challenge. It's eight seven. That means they have one challenge remaining. Again. The Gators, 18th in the RPI entering this week. But Mary Wise telling you this morning, like, yeah, we, I've told the team, we've got to run the table here yeah. to convince the selection committee that we should be hosting. And what a reward that would be for Florida wow. after all they've been through this year to host opening rounds of the NCAA tournament. But Arkansas, we fully expect them. And there's, I, again, I, I know recent history hasn't been great when it comes a couple years ago to Arkansas, but they should host first and second rounds here in Fayetteville, which, as you said, should be a great atmosphere. But also, they are still playing for an SEC championship. A win here today, that would set up that showdown with Kentucky on Wednesday. Kentucky right now in first place after the win here today. But there is Arkansas, there is Tennessee, one game back in the loss column. So all three teams in the mix. And it's something that we've talked about over the last several years with Kentucky and Florida sharing SEC titles or winning outright titles. But Arkansas in the mix as we go into the last week of the season. Now, back when, our, back when uh, the SEC had a tournament, which they're bringing back in 2025, Arkansas did win the tournament. But this would be an opportunity for them to be the regular season champion. It would be just huge for Arkansas. Arkansas, Kentucky is the showdown Wednesday here in Fayetteville. Kentucky won that in five on October 22nd. Arkansas takes on Auburn. At Auburn Friday night, they swept the Tigers here at the end of September. Mississippi State and Tennessee, South Carolina and Tennessee, those other matchups, and the Florida-Kentucky matchup closing out the regular season for both teams on Saturday. After the changeover, Pettis floats it over, diving play. No setter on the for floor for Florida. They go with the blocking sub. Good point, Missy. And there's Jill Gill on senior day with the big swing. Maddie Gravely wearing 15 for Florida was in the match momentarily right there. The block set up on the right side, and Jill Gill does a good job of avoiding her.
Lawson on to serve for Arkansas here in set five. Off the block, Gillen tight at the net. McKissick collides with Kanan, but Florida gets the point. They had a couple of bodies down, but the Gators, the gritty Gators stay with it, and they get the point. A.C. Fitzpatrick now leading the way for Florida, 19 kills. Kennedy Martin just one behind her. Muff goes with the float serve again. It's been effective. Gillen hangs in the air. McKissick with the diving play, but Florida can't save it. Point, Arkansas. Tell you what, if you're Florida, you're counting down the rotations to get Jill Gillen out of the front row. But guess who's opposite her? Taylor Head. So it, there's never any relief. New season high for Gillen and Kills with 25 back-to-back -back wow. new season highs and back-to-back -back matches. 24 last match against Ole Miss. You think this season means something to her? You think this match means something to her? Senior yeah. day here at the barn. Yeah. That one floats out of play, and it's a point for the Gators. 10-9, Florida. Some of the changes Florida has made is to have Ellie McKissick serving in this particular rotation, a strong offensive rotation. And with the changes they've made defensively, it puts her at the service line in this particular rotation. She's a good server for Florida. Gillen, that's in, Point Arkansas. Kill 26 for Jill Gill. I'd say she made the most out of that trip across the front row. An absolute rip of a swing deep into the corner. Gillen back to serve. Muff sets it back. The freshman with the rip for Florida. Kennedy Martin with her 19th kill. Martin silences the crowd momentarily, but I expect them to pick up here pretty quickly. They are making it tough on these Florida servers. Trinity Adams serves for the Gators. Floats it to Gillen. Cartwright on the attack, point Arkansas. And Gillen and Cartwright doing such a nice job of nailing that short pass that they're not taking away the right side attack from Cartwright at all. Blow for blow, back and forth we go. Courtney Jackson. She's paid the price here today, hasn't she? Yeah. Gillen with a dig. Hogue to head. Picks the spot perfectly. This is the shot that Arkansas used to exploit Florida in the first matchup. Show tip and then push it deep into the right back corner. And Florida without a challenge. No, they have one. Remember, oh, they were successful me. on they the one. They were successful right. with one challenge. However, that ball is definitely in there. Senior day here at the barn, 3,749 on hand. Second largest crowd all time, and the seniors who have turned Arkansas volleyball into a must attend event. How about half a senior day, seniors? Cartwright double figures. Gillen a season high and kills with 26. She's hitting 359, by the way. And Taylor Head after that last kill. 19 and 14 for her today. I think the other thing to notice is all of those players are in double digit digs. That is who Arkansas is. You know, they attack with heart, they defend with heart. I mean, they are two way volleyball players. You know, they do it all. And I think if you're going to win this match, you have to defend. That last rally, there was a big rip for Florida from Kennedy Martin. And it was Jill Gillen in middle back who played it up. It is defense that is gonna turn the tide here for one of these teams. This group of seniors led Arkansas to their first NCAA tournament trip since 2013, a season ago, hoping to host the opening rounds this year and make a deep tournament run. But it starts now with Florida. 
They've got the Gators on their heels here. That ball is out of play. Very wise up protesting right away. Point Arkansas. She feels like there could have been an over the net call there. And she is gonna use her final timeout. Takes a couple of steps on the floor to protest to the R1. And the timeout called by Florida, two points away from winning the match. Gators use their final timeout. In a fifth set, where it's easy to get really tight when you go back to the service line, that last serve from Arkansas is really what allowed the Razorbacks to score that point. It is pressure from the service line, and that is difficult to do in the fifth set. That pressure provided by Courtney Jackson. Yeah. If you've been with us throughout this long match, and we're two and a half hours in right now, Jackson took a couple of hard shots off her nose in this match, but she has stuck with it, and her Arkansas teammates rallying here. Arkansas hitting 304 here in this fifth set. Fans here at the barn loving it on senior day, the ceremony to come after the match. Two points away. You hate to see this one in, but I'll tell you, it's this level of play across the Southeastern Conference that I feel like could have these teams so tournament ready. Could this be the season where we see the Southeastern Conference teams make deep runs into the NCAA tournament? This is not the last home match for the seniors for Arkansas. Likely far from it, but it is senior day. Is. You want to win on senior day. That makes the celebration, the ceremony, that much sweeter. Yes, Two it points does. away. Another good serve by Jackson. Defense there for Arkansas. Cartwright, that's another one. It's off the speakers and drops in. Point for Arkansas. Match point, Razorbacks. Mary Wise with a short discussion here with the down official. To ask about the speakers, I have a feeling she probably knows the response, but it gives her team just a moment to regroup. If the ball hits the speakers and comes back on your side, you would have another play on that. But because it traveled over, it's out of bounds. Match point. That one is off the mark. The Arkansas Razorbacks in five win on Senior Day. Lots of emotion for the Razorbacks, as you would expect. That was a really good volleyball match. We traded punches back and forth in that fifth set, and eventually one team had to raise their level and defend. And it was Arkansas who was able to defend the offense of Florida and Kennedy Martin, and that's what put them over the top eventually. Florida led 11-10 in this fifth set, and they go on a 5-0 run to close it out. The serve, as you pointed out, was important. Yeah. And Arkansas, that's been a big yeah. part of their success. And Courtney Jackson served out the match. Experience, you can't teach it. Uh, you, you grow into it. And this is an Arkansas team that's been growing into this over the past four seasons. Well, fittingly on senior day, Jill Gillen was in the middle of it all. I don't think there was any way she was going to be denied today. And as we said, this is not the last home match for these Arkansas seniors, but they have done so much to make Arkansas volleyball exciting and thrilling. And Jill is with us right now. Are you doing okay? I, do, I want to check right now, Jill. It's senior oh. day. You got a lot going on. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on for sure. <laughs> Let's start with on the court. You guys close it out with a 5 nothing run. Tough match. It's always that way with Florida. 
but you had to dig deep on senior day. You weren't going to lose on this day. Yeah. Tell me about what changed down the stretch for your team. Man, I, I just truly think that we are relentless. And, you know, we, we did it Wednesday night, too. And when our back's against the wall, we're going to show up. And I'm so, so, so proud of everybody. And everybody else out on the court was not going to let their seniors lose <laughs> either. So this is really, really special win. Jill, this has really not just been over the course of this season, but I'd say this has been a four or five year project for those of you who bought in, who believed what you could accomplish here at Arkansas. Um, how rewarding is it to see that work come to fruition? It's so rewarding. It's the hardest chapter of our life and the most rewarding. Um, I'm just so thankful for my coaches. I'm so thankful for my teammates. I'm so thankful for everybody who believed in Arkansas volleyball. So again, it's it's very special. There's a lot to believe in. Uh, think about when you first stepped on campus, your first match here, what the atmosphere, what it was like here, what it was like today. Second largest crowd all time, nearly 3,800 out here today to watch what has become a must-see event here in Fayetteville. Yeah, Hog Nation has really shown up for us and it means the world and and it helps a lot so <laughs> we love them so much all right you're doing a great job keeping it together Thank i know you. it's hard <laughs> and i know it's now time for senior day so we're going to say goodbye for now it's been a thrill we know we've got a lot more volleyball to watch for you but enjoy the senior day thank ceremony you. thank it you be fun well it's been awesome there, we've got it ready. Headsets off, Jill. You got to get out there. Like yeah, she, what a joy it's been to watch. She can't stay with us. Jill I love Gillen it. But. play volleyball. <laughs> I mean, she puts everything into it. Her heart and soul, and they have built something really special here. Big hug for her head coach as she runs off the court. Twenty-six kills, a season high. There was no denying. Jill Gill, the seniors, Taylor Head there as well. Everybody wants a hug. What a performance by Florida to give Arkansas all they could. But in the end, it's the Razorbacks who win it in five here in Fayetteville for Missy Whittemore and our crew. Eric, I'm Eric Trace. It's been a pleasure to bring it to you so long. From